Hello everyone, it's Professor Oleander, and today we are starting the final leg of the last mainline expansion towards Andrews. It's a banner day for the SOL. I'm getting ready to run the passenger trains, because I've got uh, one sitting in Nantahala right now, this one's sitting here in Silva. They're fueled up and ready to go. It's 6 o'clock, so I want to capitalize on the peak hours. It looks like this train is completely loaded. And one of the things that I'm going to do today is we'll get to play around with the new mod manager. Or not mod manager, but the route manager. This one is now in a beta state. And as a matter of fact, I just downloaded this, so I haven't had a chance to play with it. We'll go ahead and line him in. And I'm using um, <clears throat> Zamu on the Discord has made a sort of an external CTC control panel. So I'm going to be using it so that way I don't have to keep jumping back and forth to Barstow. Or no. Man. Wrong game. Uh, Bryson. Not Barstow. Let's start with the B. It is currently like six o'clock in the morning I haven't been up very long I didn't sleep well last night so if I sound tired that's why um, let's see I need to throw the signal so I'm actually show you how this works it actually works surprisingly well so without having to go like I normally do up here to uh, change all the signals and you can see that's where that one is I'm actually gonna go off screen here and oops, I do need to do something. That there we go. Now it's working. Reset that. Hmm. Well, that's not working now. That's working. Interesting. It's the first time that I've had it where it didn't work. Let me see if there's an error. Oh, okay. Give me one second here. Okay, it should be listening now. There we go. Okay. I had to restart the, the little program there. It's just easier to do that than to start the recording again. So I'm actually controlling this from my browser app, and you can see that I can move everything. There's my mouse, just so you you know it's not missing. But I can switch them ad hoc, or uh, however you want to say it. So we're just going to go ahead and set all these over. And just so you can know for sure that I'm 100% doing this from my browser, I'm going to do that, and then there you go. There's your CT6 signals working from the browser extension. Somebody said that they put this on their iPhone. I've thought about putting it on my iPad. Um, I just haven't done it. It's just easier for me to keep it right here on the screen. Uh, so let me go ahead and find these switches and all. Oh, one thing I do need to do is go over and set the switches back here. And then we'll go over what trains we've got running. Why did I have him pulled out? I pulled him out to do something. Oh, I bet I was getting ready to run the locals. I did this, this is like a day or day or so ago, the last time I worked on this. Let me get him out of the way. We're still waiting on a road map for the game. The devs had initially said earlier this month that for the end of December that they were planning on having the roadmap out before the end of uh, January. 
So we're about midway through the month now. We'll see if that actually happens. I'm sure it will. I know that they uh, they have been predominantly focusing on bug fixes in this past for the past month, and then they're trying to sort out a couple things with the AI. So they haven't really done a whole lot. And yes, you saw 737 is waiting. I've been renumbering locomotives and I've still got a few more to renumber. Okay, he's at Brooks. That train needs to go into Hemingway. And then I need to run him around. I'm just looking here and I'll actually show you where they are. I've got two trains running. We'll go over which one's which here in just a second. So there's 737 at Hemingway. I just gave him the clear to go. And then there's 736. And he's on his way to Nantahala. Alright, so the passenger train is clear for takeoff. So let's see. I'm going to go into orders, road. So they've added a pause for refuel function, which is people have been asking for because if you if you stop, you have to start it over again, and then it's like the AI has to figure out what direction it was going in, and it was creating some issues. The other thing is they give you a configuration file, and you can set for low fuel callouts. You can set timestamps. Like if you want a timestamp when it arrived at the station, which I've actually got that set, you can configure uh, what your low fuel callouts are. So right now I have mine set for one ton of coal and a thousand gallons of water. The default is a half ton and five hundred. I try and keep it a thousand because I can generally get most places within a thousand. Um, so what we're going to do is this one is going to go to Dillsboro. Wilmot, Whittier, Ella, and Bryson. And we should be able to hit enable route. It's going to go to 45. It's going, I have it set, I have it set to load to wait until full. And the reason why I'm doing that is so that it can run a timetable schedule. And yes, it's late because it's supposed to leave at 6. Um, of course, the AI is going to blow for this crossing. Okay. He's right where he needs to be. Um, then they added this forced departure button. So the, the train will sit there and wait unless it's full. If it's full, it will go ahead and depart to the next station. If you are doing like I want to do and run a timetable, which I guess I need to pull my timetable up. No, I'm not going to show you because it's still being worked on. Um, if you want to run the timetable like I do, you can have them, you know, just wait at a station if you have it set to wait until full. And then, you know, when it gets to be that time, like right now, this train, that was 73 that left. 73 was supposed to depart Silva at 6 a.m. It was due to arrive in Dillsboro at 619. It will pro I'm sorry, 604. It's due to depart at 619. It will probably still make that schedule. It's only going to take it uh, four minutes to get there. It just left here at... It didn't tell me. It left here about 612 or so. It'll get there at 616. It'll have three minutes to load. Dillsboro, it won't take it that long. As a matter of fact, I believe that there's probably enough waiting in Dillsboro for it to be full. We'll just pop over here and see. Oh, yeah. 75, yeah. We're going to have more than plenty. I'm almost to the point where I need to run two passenger trains going in the same direction just to pick up all the, all the people. Among the things that we have to do today or switching, which coincidentally, I've already had the interchange service. I've got everything in <clears throat> in Silva finished, except for the stuff in Dillsboro. But like all this is sorted out. I haven't turned the pulp wood, and the reason why is tannery is full. 
the paperboard company is at 71% and I've still got two cars here I could actually throw these two cars onto the paperboard and I probably will before I pull that train out of here just so that they'll have some but um, I what did I buy I can't even remember I, I, I have to buy so much stuff now that I, I can't remember what I ended up buying I didn't buy it today I bought it like a day or so ago yeah I bought another C55 I took I'm trying to remember how I did this I took one of the C47's and I think it was this one no it was 602 that's what it was it was 602 where 602 so I took 602. This was the one that was initially running my pulpwood trains out of Connolly and bringing them up. And then I had the one night or the one, yeah, the 19 was here. The 19 would be servicing, pulling them in. I took the 382 away from here, put it on passenger duty, coming from, uh, there you go, 615s when he arrived. So we're going to let him wait till 619 and then we'll force the departure, which I need to go ahead and line the switch for, or not, not the switch, but the, I need to get him and give him signals. Oh, he's full. So he's going to go ahead and depart. I should have held the signal. I didn't even think about that. That's all right. He'll go to Wilmot. I mean, he's full. There's no sense in him rate waiting, to be right honest. But, um... No, he's not moving. Or is he? He's still loading. Let me see something. I think he's waiting. I'm looking, I'm looking at the slider here right now. It's telling me his speed is zero. So he's not moving. And But anyway. So this guy was handling the pulpwood that was coming out of Connolly. And when I had the 382 here, it helped. What I've done, I went ahead and purchased another C55 to put him on um, pulpwood duty out of Bryson. Some of the pulpwood duty out of Bryson. He's also running extra stuff. And then I brought the, what is now the 602, put him down here. So now I have two engines working the yard. So, 602, they actually swap. They don't have a dedicated uh, location, but one stays on the upper side, one stays on the lower side, and uh, it works so much faster to swap this yard out, having two engines running, because I can set the AI to move down here to get these cars ready to set in, and then I have another one that's over here just moving stuff around, and I was able to... I think it took me 30 minutes to swap these cars, the power cars, and there's another car over there. These cars weren't ready. And then sort this stuff out from the interchange, which all this stuff right here is bound for Silva, except for this one. This is bound for Wilmot. <clears throat> and I will probably send the 080 up there, or the 060 to handle that. We don't have anything down here ready. They're already taking power. What did we get? We, we've actually got a second interchange service coming at 8 o'clock. And, so I mean, this is, this is right here. This is basically what we've done this morning. We ran a passenger train just to clear out the, the fill up from last night. Because usually I put the trains there and then I'll go ahead and let them fill up and then I'll just run them in the morning. I'm probably going to stop doing that unless they fill up because like I think even the the train from Bryson because 1401 brought the train back from Bryson and I mean it's a little bit of money. It's not that much. We got what 700 from Silva. Yeah, Silva, and then 340, 20 bucks, uh, 360. I mean, it's it's a thousand dollars. Is it worth it? Yeah, but it, it, I mean, it, it's logistics. It ties up the railroad. 
we did make quite a bit last night from the hey uh, from here actually three thousand almost four thousand from the paperboard company so we did a good day yesterday and you see that we're up to about forty six thousand I haven't taken out any more loans yet that's gonna change today we're getting ready to buy our we're getting ready to max this loan out um, I'm gonna go ahead and take the max and it's on purpose but I'm gonna be able to pay it right back and then you see here the safety rating I have I think I've mentioned this before I have a problem with the way that the game calculates this it's like if you if you have like one hard coupling and you take an engine's condition down to like 98 percent um, let me go ahead and force him on there we go 45 departing he's actually one minute late I just happened to look um, if you have a hard coupling which I'll show you my equipment all these <laughs> these locomotives I think I'm up to 18 now but like there's 99 98 I didn't take any uh, pay cuts for deliveries for damaged cars but I mean everything's at 100 percent except for those two engines and then I'll even go down here it doesn't show the freight cars it just shows my passenger stuff but yeah I've got two engines that are below 100 percent and somehow or another my safety rating goes down to 91 I mean it doesn't really affect anything these are the two that I'm worried about 100 percent and on freight performance and passengers because that influences how much I get paid but the operation safety I'm like what's it matter as long as this number is over 100 percent that's all that really that really matters we're still getting our discounts and everything and then for locations, I need to see how many days. We've done three days. Today, if we're at 100% again, we'll be able to go up to tier five. Actually, we can go up to tier five now. Okay. So it's, it is three consecutive days. So tomorrow we'll go to tier five. I think today we got 10 cars. Um, the interchange is probably going to be full again because I've already serviced everything here so that is something that I've noticed if like these two cars right here I will normally when the interchange gets serviced twice I will get at least three cars for the power plant these two have already been used so chances are I'm probably going to get another load of five because I still got an hour to go hour and a half really and then if I can get some other cars like right now I'm actually curious to see how much they've loaded so far the sawmill has been at capacity in terms of logs I don't know why I went to Whittier I meant to go to the sawmill did it finally take them yeah it did so they're loading here that was the other thing I already got this place finished up too 15.7 I can't remember how much these hold. I think I want to say these guys are 52. So they're not quite halfway. They'll probably be full before we uh before the interchange gets serviced. It usually takes two two to three hours. But the pool here is sitting at 74%, so there's no reason to change them out. However, I do have more logs there's 10 more cars sitting here so it's not like I'm waiting the other thing that I've done and you you saw it before the Berkshires running the log trains because I'm using the Walker branch now um, I bring 20 cars worth the logs down and then I bring 20 cars worth the pulpwood and they all go to Silva so it it takes the load off of Connolly Creek see like right now I've got everything back up to 100% if I go down here to Walker okay you can see where the logs are back up to 48 percent the problem that I was running into with Connolly was I was having to rotate trains out so much that I was very quickly depleting their supply and when you deplete their supply they load slower so 
same thing was happening with Walker. I was taking so many cars in there and pulling the stuff out to try and stockpile a little bit that um, they were being depleted. I could have used upper. It's just a little bit more of a pain to get to the upper because there's two switchbacks as opposed to one. Um, and then you can only take like seven cars through the switchback at a time. So it, it just it made everything a little bit more complicated. So that's what we're doing with this one is I'm just stockpiling um, stuff. And speaking of Walker, I need to go up there and see what's left. I've got the little... I've opted for 080s here. They seem to work a whole lot better, and I can actually swap out this, this train. I'm not in a hurry to swap this one out because I've got plenty of pulpwood on hand right now. Um, even though I probably should go ahead and swap it out. I think I did say, yeah, it's sitting at 95%. So there's plenty here. I could go ahead and swap this one out and load it. But like I said, I've got plenty in Silva. And probably am not going to be in danger of running out. I'm trying to run pulpwood one time. And usually I run out of Bryson every other day. And then, what else? 737 has got the coal train. And 736, are you moving? Yeah, you're moving. Let's go and let's go follow 736. So this train had been running coal drags and what I would do is I would take the coal drags to Robinson and drop them off and then run this one down to Nantahala because the track site at Nantahala is only 10 cars and there's 16 here that have to go I opted to go ahead and just run this one down and leave it there that way it can swap so I don't have to run back and get the stuff from the coal mine but this train predominantly will run the small pulpwood train between like Whittier and or Whittier to go to Conley and Bryson and then the Berkshire takes everything so that's what's going on there so we got 16 cars mostly ballast this is a heavy train if I remember right that was one of the reasons why I opted to go ahead and split it in two was because it was yeah it's 1255 and I think let me, let me pull the other one up here where'd you go you're up above Hemingway I cleared you past Hemingway didn't I no okay I need to clear you to a Larka Junction there we go so he should be where he needs to go now so there you see this is the coal train and I think he has something like 2,000. Well, it'll be... I think this train's going to end up being 2,500 once it's loaded. Even with those empty cars from the Nantahala site, it would be more than I want to put on that engine. So, we've got mining supplies there. And then that. That's going to be a little bit of a pain to get out of there. It's not a big deal. just want to see how much coal he's got. So they're on the move, and what time is it? It's 6.28. We're going to go ahead and... Is there a siding? No, this is all absolutes. So he's going to have to wait. That was one of the reasons why I didn't send the, the passenger train down here up to... up to the... Uh, to Bryson. Are they not loading? What the hell? I thought I loaded these. Uh, let's see. Go ahead and load these guys up. So what's going to happen with the 382 is, I'd mentioned this before that I didn't take, I didn't finish the Alarca branch because I didn't want to interfere with the Y because that's where the site is, because the Y is where I've been turning my engines around. But when we get to Andrews, we're going to pick up a Y so I can turn the engines there so that eliminates the necessity for that the only one that it's going to interfere with is the one engine that has to work the coal trains uh, it does need to, to turn but 
I think that's a minor, minor issue. But when we open up the Alarca branch, there's two stations here, and the 382 will end up running a passenger train between Alarca, Cochrane, and or um, Alarca Junction. It'll be just a little three-car consist like this. It won't be these these type of cars. It'll be the uh, the starter ones. The what is it? The um, this one, the 1900. Yeah, it'll be that one. We'll we'll run these just open platform coaches. Be three of them. I'm not even gonna put an observation car on it because it's not worth it. But yeah, three of these guys run them up and down the branch. That'll be transfer. I'm hoping at some point somebody figures out how to do transfer for passengers. Um because you do miss out on some passengers because if you're not going to that station it's hard to load them they just stay on the train somebody said that you can like if I had okay let's just say this train here they're going I've got eight people going to Dillsboro and three people going to Whittier well this train's not going to Dillsboro or Whittier it's only going up to Bryson today Somebody had said that you can load these guys onto the train. When you get to Bryson or wherever the end of your line is, you can untick the box here. They will unload at the station and go into the queue, and then they will stay there for 30 minutes before they despawn. So if you have a train that's there waiting, you can transfer passengers. And I'm hoping somebody will tweak that in the future where you can um, change that but for right now there is that is the workaround so let's go up here and get this all squared away I'm going to take him put him in manual and we're going to go ahead and run this thing around the Y and then shove this train into the into the coal mine selected let's go ahead and break loose <clears throat> go ahead and get these cars loaded because there should be um I don't I think they're completely out of mining supplies I could be wrong but it, these should be able to get loaded before the before the interchange gets serviced. Alright, so we're going to throw that switch. A little bit of a downhill here. And I could, could elephant nose it, but I think we'll just go ahead and turn it around. At some point, I probably will start putting cabooses on trains, but right now they just, they're, I don't have the room, so they're a little bit of a pain, and I don't have anywhere to store them. That makes any sense to me, because i got to have somewhere to put them where they're out of the way. That's like the next, next phase of things that I'm going to show you that the plan is for passenger trains. It's going to require a little bit of room. And right now I just don't have it. Um, and I'm trying to figure out what to do with that situation. Let's see. Setting my switches up here. And the the passenger arrangement is gonna take up it's gonna take up a lot of capital, but the trade off is that the logistics side of things works a little bit better and it saves me some time and as the saying goes time is money go ahead and get him up here who's waiting team for bryson 28 okay so that's a pretty pretty decent knock there there's at least 100 people there waiting the passenger trains, as they're going to be set up, will hold about 500 and some people. 84 times... 84 times 6, plus 50. And I'm going to have to break out the calculator because I'm 
not with it this morning. 84 times 6 plus 50. 554. Two trains, I'll have 100 and, or 1,000, 1,008 passengers. Because there, I'm going to have two tra two mixed or not mixed, two matched train sets, and that'll end up being the main passenger train, and um, the two main passenger trains, and then like I said, I'll have the the three car, which should be more than enough. And if I need more, I'll add another one to it. But I think. I think that capacity is going to be more than enough for the Alarca branch. I don't see a whole lot of people riding from there. Alright, we'll throw this one back. And back up. And let's see. What time is he due in Wilmot? Did he already arrive at Wilmot? Parted for Wilmot. He, he's not holding. What time did he leave? 6.20. It's been 15 minutes. I did give him a signal. Let me think here. He's supposed to be in Wilmot at 6.29. So he's five minutes late. Let me get this coal train moving, and I'm going to go up there and find out. I have a feeling he blew through Wilmot. And it's probably because he was full. I won't say for sure until I get up there to find out. Let's see, I need to throw that and... Ah, I did that again. Oh well, I can do it on the foot. That's all right. I just need, I hit Control T without looking at the map. I just want to make sure these switches are aligned. It's so weird being on the ground when I've been flying around the whole time. Because I'm just, I, I get in a hurry trying to get this stuff done. Okay. Looks like he's lying. Yeah, they are out of mining supplies. Okay. Not a problem. We'll get that finished. Put him back up here where he belongs. In his little cage. You sit here. And I'm going to have my out-of-body experience. Alright, let's see what's going on with 1401. Not at Wilmot. He's still sitting in Dillsboro. Why are you still sitting in Dillsboro? He has a signal. Let's see. Signal stop. Why is the signal stop? Oh, I know why. So this is a problem that this mod has, and it's something that you need to understand going into it. So what this what this engine is doing is it wants to back up. It wants to back up so that it can establish which direction is actually headed. And because it has a stop signal, it can't move. So the problem that I have with this is it's not telling me. It just says that it departed. Well, I'm like, okay, well, it's gone. Well, it hasn't. And I, th it said in the notes that they had fixed this, but apparently they have not. So if I just give him a signal, if I set the signal behind him, he's going to back up. He's going to move 20 feet. he's stopping so now he knows he's going the wrong direction and then now he's going to go forward so that's something that they 
still need to work on. I, I distinctly remember seeing in the notes for this one that they had they had fixed that where they would quit doing it, but apparently not so. So they're late, not a big deal, as long as I can catch everybody before eight o'clock or so, which that won't be an issue today. Um, and I think he's slam full, probably. Yeah, he's full. So, just, you know, growing pains. They'll get it sorted out. Um, let me see. What were we doing? We need to go up and... And get him moving into the coal mine. And I'm just going to do it this way so I don't have to... Probably whenever I start doing the, if I do another playthrough, I probably will do everything on the ground, just because um, reasons. Uh, actually, I have to do this first. So this is another thing that's a little bit aggravating. I can't give him a signal because there's an open switch, and I know it's a safety thing, but it's still annoying. Like I can't, I can't give him a signal, so I have to get him started. So we'll go ahead and get him moving into that block, and then I'll give him orders. And there he is. Just set him for 15, so that he'll kind of stay in that speed. place want to go there so here we have the twins these are the workhorses of the railroad I can't name them but these are going to be called Hans and Franz I didn't show you but the the two engines that work in Silva are Jake and Elwood because everybody knows that I like to name engines particularly my yard engines but these are the twins these are the workhorses of the railroad Ever since I put them together, they have, um, they'll pull anything, which coincidentally, I should probably bring it up. I may put a link in the description to, uh, something that I worked on yesterday, which was a, okay, he's in Nantahala now, um, something that I worked on yesterday which was the <clears throat> horsepower or not horsepower power to weight ratios for each one of the engines that are in the game and it, you might think that you want to go to a Berkshire when you get to red marble but the thing about red marble is and the thing about the Berkshire in general is it's extremely heavy. It shines in flatland. If you're working a grade, the best engine that you can have is this one. These two engines here, and let me actually just pull up my my file so that I can give you some numbers. I won't show it to you just yet because I'm still working on it, but let me at least pull the the actual figures up. That's the one I want. Okay, so the Berkshire has a power to weight ratio when it is loaded of 157.35. So that's 157 Point three five pounds of tractive effort, which is basically what I'm I'm using for every ton that it pulls, and that's based off of its just just its weight, not train weight. 
And to give you a comparison, the C55 has 257.04 pounds per ton of tractive effort. So you're talking about 100 more pounds of tractive effort per ton for just the engine by itself. So the more powerful of the engines is actually the C55 when you start basing it like that. Now the C65 has way more tractive effort, but when it uses more of its own power trying to move itself around than, uh, oh, this turntable is annoying. Why am I hearing a train whistle? Or is that just me? There shouldn't be anything coming this way. Ah, oh, crap, I missed it. I gotta get one more. I really hope they come up with a, with a turntable controller. This is a bit annoying. And I overshot it. If you're within a certain range, it will align it for you, like that right there. All right, I'm going to drop this guy, because this is bound for the tower. And word to the wise when you unemu these things. So this one's emued. I'm going to cut the brake stand out, do that first. I'm going to make sure that I have this one selected. Independent all the way on. MU. If you don't do that, if the throttle is set on this one and you disconnect from this one, it will sit there and chase it. And once you stop this one, it will keep going because it doesn't it doesn't understand. I've had that happen before. We can cut that one loose. We're gonna go ahead and turn 734 here. And yes, I renumbered this one. This one used to be 34. I went ahead and, and made them uh, went ahead and made them 700 series. I'm trying to figure up the numbering system that I want to settle with. I don't know why. That's got to be a bug. Yeah, that's got to be a bug. Yeah, that's an audio bug. Okay. Maybe it'll stop once I hook it up. So let's see. We're going to go ahead and turn this guy around. This is a bit annoying because if I have to turn around like this, I should have just started it from this side. Um, I forget what it's. Oh, so yeah, as far as power works out, these guys have more power. The C55s have more power that they can have available that's not being used to pull themselves around as opposed to the Burks. Whereas the Burks, they spend way more of their power, and this is true because they're using they're using the the um I thought I had the, this one selected. Um they're using more power to just move themselves around than you know moving an actual load so if you understand that concept you can see why switch engines are much more efficient at moving heavy trains for very short distances because they have given up the range for power so if you think about the k28t which has 
very little capacity for water and coal it doesn't have any range but I'm looking here on my chart if these engines have 257 uh, pounds per ton the K28T has 300 pounds per ton and it like I said it sacrificed the weight the range of its coal of a uh, the range of operations for being able to use that power to actually move stuff. Okay, cool. We're in Wilmot. How far behind are we? Three, four, six forty-nine. It's supposed to leave at six forty-four. We can make up the schedule. Let me make sure he's not going to have an issue. I think the yeah, he's on. He's on a. Uh, words are hard. I can't remember the name of that block. It's not an absolute, it's the opposite. It's not temporary. Anyway. Oh, crap. I, I know the word, it's just not coming to me right now. Okay, we're gonna force departure. Let me take that off, that off. He should, he's gonna back up, isn't he? see what he's doing there he goes he's gone I didn't get a message saying that he's departed that's why I was curious oh it did say I didn't see it come up all right so he's gone let's see what how long does it take him to get to Whittier 644 to 651 so what is that that's seven minutes and he left at 6.50. I said seven minutes, so he'll get there at 6.57. And then he will leave at 7.06. I will make this timetable available at some point, just not right now. Because I'm still working on it, and it's got some stuff on it that I don't want to show yet. But, um... But, yeah, the, the tank engine has actually, and this is true for the switchers as well, they trade off their range because they don't carry anywhere near as much coal and water, and coincidentally that's one of the reasons why these are fairly desirable engines, because they have smaller tenders. Everybody sort of complains about it, they're like, we need auxiliary tenders, and I want to remind everybody this is only a 50 mile branch line, which auxiliary tenders are a little overkill, but I get it. You know, you don't want to have to stop for fuel and water. I think that's more of an issue of them balancing the coal and water consumption more than we need to sit down and put in um, auxiliary tenders because that's just one more thing to try and program in. I'm not saying it's a bad idea. I'm just saying probably in the grand scheme of things, there's more things that are important that need to be worked out as opposed to aux tenders but like I said I get it it is a pain to run out of coal and water because it's happened to me a few times but you know one of them things um, <clears throat> so while we're talking about power to weight ratios if you want to know what the diesels have in terms of power to weight the SW1 has 494 and the GP9 has 485 so if we're talking about just power to weight ratios the SW1 has the highest of any in the game and then the GP9 is right behind it. And then that is followed by the K28T. And the next one is the S51, the little 080. I got it close enough. Yeah, the S51, I'm sorry, not the S51, the K35 is the next. Then the S51. And then the D46 
And I'm not going to go through all of them. What did I say? D46 is at 274. The next one looks like it's the D is the C55. And I think somebody had said that they were having issues with the decapod derailing. I'm probably not going to get one. Um, truth be told, I'm not a particular fan of decapods. I know that they were relatively popular, but the the thing I don't like about them is that they, I don't know, I just don't like the way they look, for one, but um, I've just never been a fan of decks. I feel like there were other engines out there that could do a better job. I mean, Western Maryland had, a, had several of them, and they worked on grades for them. Partly, it helped because they had more driving wheels, so they were able to put down power more efficiently but um four mountains at least but anyway <clears throat> I feel like in terms of of pulling power consolidations and to a later extent the northerns were probably the better freight engine designs and then when you get into passenger engines that's a little bit of a mixed bag Northerns, aka the 484s, were pretty much jack of all trades. They could do freight or they could do passenger. They, you see them a lot in passenger service. Something like the the Golden State engines that Southern Pacific had, and um, obviously the J class that Norfolk and Western had. And then you had the 800 class that Union Pacific had, and then you know others that are out there they were fairly popular engines and they could do a lot of everything before that you would have had your six driver engines so if you think about the pacifics why is he at a red board your pacifics which are six drivers your Hudson's, which are six drivers, I know why. Because i got to switch open. Which I'm partial to Hudson's. Um, and then before that, it was four drivers. You think about the Milwaukee Road engines. The, and then the, the Americans, the 440s. But the six drivers tended to be pretty pretty fast and reliable engines it's subjectional because the nyc had the water level route so it's not like they were pulling any heavy grades they did have some grades that they had to work on but um the hudson's pretty much stayed down on the flats but they kind of had operations down to a science let's see I'll run over here and throw the switch i can't remember which one's open not that one. I think it's back here. No, I know which one it is. It's the other one. It's the other end of the yard. This one. That should give him... Yeah, that should give him his clear. An intermediate block. I knew I was going to come up with the answer. Intermediate block. He's holding for an intermediate signal. These are intermediates. It, uh, were, as I said words were hard. It's too early in the morning for me to try and remember stuff like that. Intermediate, which is technically a temporary block. If I go in here and look, just, one day I am going to do kind of a tutorial on how this stuff works. So what will happen is... I remember right, this one should go to a yellow. Yes. Okay. I was right. And what that means is there's two blocks here. Oh, it's easier to show you this way. Uh, let's see where are we at. We were right here. So there's two blocks between Whittier and Thomas Valley, and these are intermediates. 
these blocks here are absolutes. Meaning if there's a train occupied in them, you cannot line anything to go through it. So you got your two intermediate blocks. This one's occupied, this one's not. A train can work in between these two blocks without having to get permission from a dispatcher because basically the signals will just, as long as the block's not occupied, the signal will default to a an approach or a yellow so you can just work back and forth between them. When you get into control blocks, which are control blocks will typically have names like this would be Thomas Valley, Barker's, Cowie, or Cowie. <clears throat> you have to physically give them permission to go into those blocks. That was weird. I think if yeah, the longest one is right here. So if you wanted to work between Hemingway and Bryson, you've got three blocks that you can freely move through without having to contact your dispatcher. But any one of these control blocks, Brooks, Alarca, Hemingway, you have to have somebody physically throw the switch to give you clearance to go into that block. And if that block is occupied, you cannot let anybody go through it. That's an absolute block. Easiest way to explain that. So there's your lesson for today. That's why if you're ever curious about why the signal will go to a yellow when there's nothing there and you're like, well, I didn't give it a signal, that that's the way the system works. It If there was a train that was leaving, like, if you had a train that was over here in Bryson, why did I call this Bryson? Whittier. You had a train that was in Whittier that had to come out and let's say that there was an industry down in here somewhere. I mean, you'd have to get permission from the dispatcher and say, hey, I'm going to be working between such and such. It's like, okay, proceed on signal indication. It, you just run until you get a stop signal. So you'd have this block and then you would have... What's the next one? You'd have this one. That's Thomas Valley. Oh, that's right. This is a block. This is a block. Control block. Intermediate block. Control block. I can just barely see the signals. It's right there. This is an intermediate. And there's actually an industry right there. This is, uh, I think this is Barker Pulpwood. So you have a spur. So if you wanted to work, let's say we had, well, Kawi's the next one. But basically, if there was an industry right here and you wanted to work it, you could you would have to get your clearance through Barker to go to like Wilmot. Or if you were going to Kawi, you would have to get clearance to go through Kawi, and then you could just basically roll through these signals right here. So I'll do, I'll talk about that at some point in the future. I don't know all the nuance, nuances of uh, CTC, but I do know, I do know that. All right, it's 7.02, and he just arrived in Whittier. He was supposed to be there at 6.51. He's going to leave at 7.06, so we are now going to be able to get back on schedule. And hopefully, hopefully, let's just go see how much he's got. There's 540. He's, no, he's not going to leave. We're not going to fill this train up. Barely certain. If we were loading for Silva, we would, but we're not. So he's not going to fill up before two, three minutes, two and a half minutes. So while that's going on, I'm going to go around here to Nantahala. We've got to run around the Passanjar train. Got to find somewhere to put all this stuff. He's there, so I'm going to go ahead and run him into the siding. Not that, not that far. This one right here. So we're going to go ahead and run him into the siding. Should give a toot toot. There we go. He's received the signal. He's proceeding forward. 
So these are the yesterdays. And I will probably just come in here and just kind of shove them down. I think the way that I'm going to do this, rather than do a whole bunch of intricate shifting, shifting around this early in the morning, is I'm probably just going to go ahead and um, couple onto these, shove them down. Uh, I forget what we said this line was, but just sh shoved them down this way and just spot cars until everything is spotted and then go from there. That's why I said I needed to have an engine to just stay down here with it. Well, that's going on seven o'clock. It's good enough to go ahead and start running this passenger train. So he's going to go to Almond, Alarca, Hemingway, Bryson, and we can enable the route manager. He is not full. We're going to go ahead and See if he's gonna okay he's actually gonna move he's done it before where he wouldn't move forward because of that stop signal and there he goes he's gonna go ahead and carry on and he's clear so I can go ahead and give him signals all the way up the line into Bryson. Man, there's a lot of signals on this end of the line. Okay, he's cleared to Bryson now. There, I gotta go fix a switch in Bryson, but for the most part, he's good to go. Alright, let's go ahead and give him manual, and then I want to throw that... I actually gave him a green signal, but because we're at the end of the line, it's not going to let him go. And just to make sure, yeah, I don't have anything in there. So let's throw this switch here. Go forward. Couple him up to this one, and then we'll shove all this forward. Get this track screw started. I think it took... I don't remember what time I spotted these cars, but it took the majority of the day. I think if I get them spotted here about 7 o'clock, by 10 or 11 o'clock tonight, this will be finished. So the first train will run over tomorrow. And there's going to be a huge power move because at that point I'll have two interchanges and I have the mod for interchange to interchange. So... That's why I said I'm going to max out the loan today because I'm going to have to buy a crap ton of engines. I already know which ones I'm going to have to buy. Because I've got to have, there's industries in Andrews that need to be worked on. So yeah, it's going to be a busy day tomorrow once I get everything opened up. Let's see here. That was a hard couple, and I probably... Oh, I didn't take any damage. How about that? The game. I think the game does calculate if you're slowing down. It figures into the damage calculation. So, let's see. I gotta back up some because he's in the... He's in a reverse switch. There, I don't know if you're noticing it or not, but there is a little bit of a stutter from uh, passenger loading script. I see it. I don't know if it's coming through on the video, but like every 20 seconds or, though, or so, we'll get a skip where the game kind of freezes for just an instant. And what it is is the passenger thing is is checking to see if uh, if there are if the trains fully loaded 
I don't know why it's causing it to stutter, but it, it does that. I noticed ever since I started running it, it does. It's not as bad as it, it was before, because it was like noticeable. Like it would just stop and then move. And then about 20 seconds later, it would stop and then move. And part of that has to do with the way that the, the game's been coded thus far, but it's a minor thing. Right, he leaves. Actually, he should have already left. So while that's going on, I can just click on him from here. I need to get him out of the way. You can go. There we go, he's gone. Alright, what do we got? We got two more we can fit in there. one more. Let me get over here where I can look at it a little bit better. Oh, we can fit a couple more in here. I only need to have one truck on it. Just barely. Alright. So they're going to unload. That leaves me five cars to put back in. The, the only thing I don't like about it is it's not going to tell me whenever these guys are unloaded. So I kind of have to gauge it. And I th think when I figured out with these guys was it took somewhere around every two minutes... So it looks like these are going to take 0.1 per minute and cross the board. Yeah, 0.1. So 0.1 per minute. I can't remember how much those carry. And then you've got 50. Let's see, 0.1. There's going to be 10 of those. 10 times 50 is 500. Is that right? Let me do the math on that. Like I said, it's still too early. I haven't had enough caffeine yet. So 500 divided by 60 is 8 hours. So it's going to take about 8 hours for these to unload. So that puts that at 15. So it's 3 o'clock and then I have 5 more to unload. And... See, th yeah, these are fifty tons. So three o'clock, five more. Well, they're all going to unload at the same time. So fifty more times, uh, yeah, five hundred. Ah, I don't know why I did that. That was weird. That was weird. I don't know why we jumped up. Oh, I knew. Because I hit zero. I was wondering, why did that happen? Um, so it's going to be eight hours, and then eight hours. So 16 hours. So seven o'clock now, 12 would be seven, and then four, 10 o'clock. Okay, I was right. I said between 10 and 11. So 10 o'clock tonight, we'll have the line open and be able to run chooches. He's going. Yeah, I didn't notice. He's he's dearly departed. He should get to Ella at what time did he leave? 709 and it is 4 minutes. So he should be there any second now. I'm I'm not, the reason why I'm like looking is I'm oh, crap he did it again I keep forgetting there's a freaking signal right there behind him I really need to 
send a note to them and saying, hey, if you have, like, I'm running an eight-car passenger train, and I'm like, if they're up, if they're too close to the signals, it's stopping them, and it's not giving you anything. Yeah, there he goes, he backs up. It's, it's just annoying, because I have to remember where he is, that there's not enough room, because the stations are so close to the signals. If I had, I think if I had one more car on this train, it wouldn't matter, because you would be in that block. You would be in the, um, I forget the name of the spot where the, the actual switch is. See, now he's going. Ugh, annoying. Okay, let's go work the coal train, and then I am going to finish up the rest of my stuff off camera. And I don't know if I'm going to do it today or not. I'm just looking to see. Yeah, I'll do the rest of this off cam and work on getting everything ready and figuring up what I need to order. I have a pretty good idea, but I want to make sure that I don't over order what I need. I think that's something else that I've noticed too. These won't <clears throat> these won't unload if there is an engine. Or they won't load if there's an engine hooked up to them. Alright, so let's do this. Bring him forward. I'm just going to spot the mining supplies there. Why did I go in reverse? You need to go forward, dummy. And then when I get ready to leave here, I'll just reach over and grab him and swap these out. I just want to get this done relatively quickly. Why are you looking at a red board again? That's why, because I don't know why those signals are turned that way. Let's see growing pains and like I said this is the first time that I've tested with it and one part of the reason why I haven't really paid much attention to it was they said that they fixed the the behavior for trying to check which direction they go in but clearly it needs some more tweaking okay he is running now it's just annoying just like I've been sitting been waiting here for five minutes I have no indication that the train is sitting there waiting for me to throw a signal for him not saying that I'm up against a red board or anything like that and then the time that I'm expecting him to be in the station he's not and I'm like what the hell okay so let's get this guy on the move back and we'll just couple these together and throw that other uh, hopper car up in the up in the way pull this engine down have him wait We'll actually put it, probably have him wait here and um, once this once we get ready to leave we'll, we'll do -si do and get this one put on the train that's going back and send everything to Silva and then get ready for the hell that will be tomorrow that was a hard one did we damage it? yeah we did yeah whatever They're freight cars, man, and that car is empty. And that's another thing, too. This car is empty. And it's saying that it took damage. And I'm like, what got damaged? There's nothing in it. This one, it's 100%. But this guy, there's literally nothing inside this car. It says empty, but it got damaged. And I'm like, I, I you did not damage that coupler. I can assure you of that. But, um, you know, I, what happened was I forgot this track goes flat. There's so much of a grade here. What are we, it's like, yeah, 2.3%. But you get over here, and it's like 04 So it's a little bit tricky. And I'll admit I wasn't paying the closest attention to it, but whatever. But, yeah, you go from a 2.3 to basically flat. I think it is flat back here. Yeah, it's flat. So, 
That's what happens. See, it was empty. I said it was empty. But that is annoying, the way that the game models um, safety stuff. It's like, oh, you hit it, you hit it too hard. And it's like, <laughs> I, can, I can show you videos of how hard these cars used to get coupled back in the day. I'm, this is nothing. I mean, they would hit them so hard it knocked the dust off of them. I mean, it, it, they were kicking cars with brakemen on them, and the brakemen just wanted to get the hell off of them, so, yeah. Yeah, don't give me that. Oh, you, you, you damaged it. It's like, these cars are not Fabergé eggs. They can take a beating. And the, the point of fact is, there's still, up until a few years ago, there were still a lot of these cars that were built in this era that were still running. Now, they had gone through rebuilds since then, but um, they were still running. Some of them, you could very clearly see where the issues were, but for the most part, they were uh, in pretty decent shape considering okay that's done we'll get over here and get out of the way so that way they can gravity feed and uh that will be the end of what i'm going to do for right now because basically all the industries have been switched the mow work train is done it's sitting at nantahala the only thing that is left to switch is Bryson. Well, Bryson and Dillsborough. Dillsborough will take me 10 minutes. The way that I've been doing it, it'll, it'll take me about 10 minutes to finish that one up. And, um, and that's it. So, the next time you see me will be the first trains that get to go over the red marble grade. And that's going to be fun. That's 4.5% of, oh my god. And, um, yeah. So, I will see you all in the next video.